Tom Brady will not be a Patriot. Congrats to TJ Hushman Zada on our show. Uh, good for Jeff Darlington, a buddy, a friend, a good reporter who called this. Am I surprised? Yes, I am. I said, you know, 75%. I think it's hard to leave smart, hard to leave friends, hard to leave family. Tom Brady is family to me. Uh, it's all set up. But there were signs. I mean, we said, listen, he put his house up for sale. His trainer put his house up for sale. Uh, you know, am I surprised? Yeah. Uh, shocked? Uh, uh, sh- you know, shocked is seeing O.J. Simpson in a Bronco on the 405 with cops in front of him and behind him. That's shocking, okay? Shocking. I'm not shocked much in sports. Um, listen, my number one wish for Tom Brady from the start has always been wrap it up, retire, put a bow on it. I do not want to see him with a pirate flag on his helmet wearing orange slash pewter. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him wearing silver and black with an eye patch on the logo in Vegas. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him in a half-empty stadium in L.A. with a coach. To me, I don't know if he's good. And for a team, the Chargers, that's renting the stadium from the other team. I don't want to see any of it. I want to see Jeter here. RBI walk-off single, Yankee Stadium. Seacrest out. I want to see Kobe drop 60, drop the mic. I want to see Elway. I I, I don't want to see the Johnny Unitas thing. I I don't want to see wobbling over to a franchise that's the second biggest in their own city. But two things we know. Number one, we watched Tom Brady last year yell and scream at teammates. He's unhappy. We saw the documentary. He's unhappy. Okay, that's why there was any possibility he would leave. You leave when you're unhappy. And the second thing, I don't think it is a coincidence that Tom Brady leaves and makes a decision, you know, 10 hours after Stephon Diggs signs with Buffalo. Okay, I'm not Tom Brady, but I've left cross-country four times. Every single time, I'm 50-50. And I waited for a sign. Tom Brady was 50-50, or he would have announced this a week ago, two weeks ago. He was on the fence, and he waited for a sign. They needed tight end. Cleveland paid for it. They needed a wide receiver. Buffalo, Stephon Diggs, Arizona, DeAndre Hopkins paid for it. Tom waited for it. I absolutely believe if Stephon Diggs is a Patriot this morning, Tom stays. Edelman's your two, Sanu's your three, good backs, center returns. Tom's like, all right. Again, it's not analogous to Tom Brady. Four times I've left. Each time I waited for a sign from my bosses. When I left ESPN, I walked into an office. John Wildhack, nice guy, athletic director now at Syracuse, wonderful man, had dinner a couple weeks earlier, told my wife, I'm going to a meeting. I'll text you when I get out. I'll have an answer. We talked for two minutes. He said something I didn't want to hear. Texted my wife before I got under the elevator eight feet from him. I said, we're going to L.A. Let's roll. Tom just waited. DeAndre Hopkins, they could have had him for a second rounder. Well, the Patriots don't have one. They'd get one. They always do. They'd give him second rounders. They'd probably give him a first. They could have done it. They could have done it. I mean, Dallas keeps paying everybody $100 million. They could have done it. It's not like Dallas is using a bank uh, bank in Switzerland. Tom Brady kept waiting and waiting. I don't think it's a coincidence. March 16th to 18th, we all knew that was the date. Didn't didn't all the people that come on my show, they were going, oh, you got to thread the needle. New England's got to figure out how to thread the needle. Uh, Can they thread the needle? Can they sign this? So here we are, March 17th. So March 16th yesterday was a crazy day. Everybody's signing. A lot of skill people, a lot of receivers. Randall Cobb goes here. Amari Cooper resigns. DeAndre Hopkins goes here. There's a lot of wide receivers changing teams. Tom sat and waited. Bills got better. Baltimore, Cleveland got better. Colts look like they're getting better. Tom waited and waited, and he saw top tight end and wide receiver talent. 
the kind he yelled at teammates last year because they weren't as good as those players sign elsewhere. And I don't think it's a coincidence that eight hours after Stephon Diggs and DeAndre Hopkins, specifically Diggs, moves, Mike Reese reports this. Tom Brady initiated contact late last night and came over. Why late last night? So if you look at when he contacted him, oh, it's a couple hours after Diggs signed with Buffalo. You think it's a coincidence? I do not. I do not. This idea that Tom knew he was. Tom, I've done it four times. For all of you listening, men and women who have moved, it's not easy to move. Nobody really wants to move. We're all creatures of habit. You don't want to move. You don't. You like your coaches. You know Belichick's great. Josh McDaniels works. You know the system. You know the language. Old dogs, new tricks. You know the story. We don't want to learn them. But you wait for signs. You're on the fence. You wait and you wait and you wait. And the thing we need, receivers, tight ends, they're available. Greg Olson, Austin Cooper, Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins. To a lesser extent, Amari Cooper. You wait, you wait, you wait. Diggs gets traded. Tom, two hours later, meets Kraft. Meaning he probably called him 90 minutes earlier. So if you met him late last night, when did he call and set it up? It's not like you walk over to Robert Kraft's house. Hello? Yeah, it's Tom. I thought I'd stop by unannounced. Tom saw it, got on the phone, called Kraft, got in the SUV, drove over, told him. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins, you could have gotten him for a second-round pick. Hell, their coach, Bill O'Brien, is a former Patriot OC. Belichick knows him. You couldn't. You have his phone number. Tom Brady, you have his phone number. So, um, I... I if you've never moved around the country, if you've always lived kind of in the same area, I can only tell you the way it works for me four times, and I've discussed this with a lot of buddies who have moved. Nobody wants to move. <laughs> you don't. It's a pain in the ass. It really is. That's salty language for you West Coast early people. But we're all at home anyway. You're all watching Netflix. They swear on that thing nonstop. All right, let me go to this. On another network, apparently Robert Kraft was watching this morning and called the show during the commercial break and told the people on that show, I'd like to be very clear, if Tom Brady wanted to stay, we would have worked it out. Tom Brady wanted to leave. No, he didn't. What he wanted was wide receivers and tight ends. He didn't want to leave. This is what's known as protecting the enterprise. By the way, Bill Belichick, who's not a big, I'm going to release a lengthy PR sheet, did this morning, protecting the enterprise. Belichick went on to say, uh, you know, I'll just give you the best lines. Tom was not just a player who bought into the program. He was one of the original creators. He lived and perpetuated our culture on a daily basis. He was a tone setter and a bar raiser. Tom and I will always have a great relationship built on love, admiration, respect, and appreciation. Hmm. Sometimes in life it takes time to pass to truly appreciate something or somebody. But that's not been the case with Tom. Special person and the greatest quarterback of all time. Oh, he finally said it. Think that's a coincidence? You're, you're, you're telling me there's a lot of coincidences. Hour after Dig Signs calls Kraft at the house. Belichick can't bring himself to give Brady a game ball. <laughs> it was uncomfortable when he did it this year. And the reason Kraft and the reason Belichick are doing this, because Tom's going to win this divorce in the short term. Tom's going to go to, let's say, the Chargers, 5-11. and 11. You think they're going to be 5-11 and 11 with Tom? I'm going to say no. He's going to go to Tampa Bay with all those weapons, 7-9. and nine. Think they're going to be 7-9 and nine with Tommy? No. Tom's going to have better stats than last year. And the narrative is going to be, and Belichick knows it, oh, hell, Tom had left stuff left in the tank. Oh, my God. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. They may just re-sign Melvin Gordon, I'm told. Austin Eckler, Hunter Henry. Tom's throwing for 4,800 yards. Tom's going to have 39 touchdowns and seven picks. 
Trey Turner solved the guard. They draft a left tackle. If he goes to the Chargers or he goes to Tampa, Tom's putting up numbers, baby. He's putting up Peyton Manning Denver first-year numbers. Remember that? And they know it. Tom's winning this divorce short-term. Now, in seven years, Belichick may have another Super Bowl. But when you know you're going to lose the divorce, you put on a happy face. Right? You know, your wife leaves you, starts dating a stud. You go to the gym. Hey, I feel great. Look at me. Weight's coming off. You know? New England knows short-term Tom's winning this thing. New England's got Jarrett Stidham. My bad. They may get Andy Dalton. They have no weapons. They have no quarterback. They have good running backs. Not great, as you saw last year when the O-line in front of them and the fullback was hurt. So when you know you're going to lose a divorce short-term, and I would argue New England today, quarterback, tight end, wide receiver, worst weapons in the league. I don't even think it's arguable. You, you tell me who's worse. Tom's going, he's going to cherry pick the weapons. Chargers have to be considered. Uh, Tampa Bay, you know, pe- I'm reading this morning, people are saying the Colts are out of it. Colts are going to get Phillip Rivers. Why wouldn't he go to the Colts? They have a weapon issue. Eric Ebron left. Running backs are B guys. Receiver won. He's going, Tom's going to a place that's got weapons. Tom, Tom will sacrifice a little old line. He's not going to, he wants to go to a place and go, oh, oh, Tom's got a little sauce left. So when you know that, Kraft calls a television show this morning during a break. An owner of an NFL team. May I talk to the host? How often has that happened to anybody ever? Let's start with it doesn't and work our way up. And then Belichick, he doesn't even know where the PR department is in Foxborough. He hasn't walked past it. They come to him. This morning he rushes into the office and does a lengthy, heartfelt, I love you. All coincidences. When you're going to lose a divorce, you hit the gym. Make sure word's out. You're doing great. Finally, got rid of her. Look at me. I can do what I want.